As of this month, it officially marks my one year anniversary of using Linux as my primary operating system. And I've tinkered with Linux in the past on and off, but this has been the one year of it being my daily driver. So I wanted to make this video to go over like my experience, um, the road bumps along the way, what I liked, what I didn't like. So yeah, basically about a year ago, I was done with the bull crap with Windows, I had enough, and essentially I just wanted to find a drop and replacement for Windows. I wasn't really interested in learning like all the complexities, like learning the underlying system or messing with too much things in like the command line. Wasn't interested with the terminal at all, to be honest. So um, I did what anyone would do, and I went to YouTube, you know, best, best beginner Linux distros. And of course, as you can imagine, I stumbled across Linux Mint. So Linux Mint, um, as many of you know, has the Cinnamon desktop environment, which looks very similar to Windows. I mean, you have your bar at the bottom, your start menu. It's It was it was a really smooth transition for me, interface-wise. And um, yeah, so I decided to go with Mint. I installed Mint. Um, Basically was able to find most of the applications I wanted with help from the um, the software center because flat packs were enabled out of the box. So anything I couldn't find as a system package through apt, I was able to find a flat pack for. So software availability was pretty seamless. There wasn't much that I couldn't do. The only things that I did find that I couldn't do were some video games, um, but... I, I'm a pretty basic gamer. I play games like Minecraft and on Steam. I don't know. I play like Doom, Portal, that kind of stuff. And like for really competitive games, um, like Valorant, stuff like that, a lot of those require like really invasive anti-cheat. And that's usually where the incompatibilities come in for Linux games. But I don't really play those that much, so it didn't affect me that much. Um, Proton was amazing, thanks to the Steam Deck. Wine is great, so um, yeah, everything was basically compatible for me, other than um, I had a Go XLR at the time, so I had some hardware issues with that. I managed to find a script on GitHub that kind of made it work. But, I don't know, it was all over the place. I just ended up swapping it out for a more basic audio interface because then I was getting, like, a weird delay. So, a little bit of hardware issues, but once I adjusted my hardware, smooth sailing. Other than that, um, my other use cases were, like I said, gaming, playing a lot of Minecraft, stuff like that, no issues. Um, at the time, I was studying for my CCNA, so I was using, like, Packet Tracer and stuff. No problems with that. And... I'm a college student, still am, almost done, hallelujah, but, um, so I was writing a lot of papers and stuff like that, and I was kind of frustrated with the lack of native Office support, like you can't download any of the Microsoft Office applications, and the online implementation of it just isn't quite there, it kind of sucks, it's a little slow, so... I mean, I did what I could with the online office suite, but I ended up just installing LibreOffice and I would just write my papers in there and stuff like that. And I actually really ended up liking LibreOffice. I still use it to this day. And then when I'd submit my papers, you know, you can you can just convert them to DOCX files or for Excel, XLSX or whatever Microsoft's file is stuff like that so it's still compatible if you if I need to turn it into a professor or share it with a friend so yeah I was just able to use LibreOffice to bypass um, the Microsoft Office incompatibilities and then um, for email clients I used to use Spark I love Spark on Mac and Windows can't get that on Linux and I ended up settling with Thunderbird which I like Thunderbird but with Microsoft Exchange emails specifically, there's like no support. And I know there are like third-party add-ons you can install. I messed with some of those and it got it working kind of, but it was still finicky. And then like you have to pay for them if you run out of the trial period. So I'd really like to find um, an email client on Linux that has Microsoft Exchange support out of the box. 
Um, so I'm waiting on that. If there's anything that you're aware of, please comment below because that would be absolutely great. And the last issue that I kind of ran into was um, I was dual booting at the time. I still had Windows on a separate drive like in case I needed something for Windows. So my time was always out of sync and that screwed up a lot of issues. And other than that, like I got pretty comfortable using Mint. It just became like I didn't really have to think much. I'd just use it and it was kind of like Windows, but it wasn't annoying like Windows. Like I could just work. And I felt like I wasn't always fighting with the system. And I got really comfortable. Eventually, I wanted to start learning more of the underlying workings of the distro. So I started learning some of the basics like the apt package manager. Like actually using it in the terminal versus just the basic Mint software center. Stuff like that. I started learning the directory structure of the Linux system, you know, your home directory versus your root directory, stuff like that. And also like users and permissions, just all those sorts of basics. And um, I don't know, then I started to really understand more about Linux and I didn't really want to be spoon fed anymore. I had the itch to look for something that was a little less plug and play. I wanted a distro that required a little more tinkering and I could have a little more fun with. So Eventually, I decided to go with Debian. One of the main reasons w for this was because I was watching a lot of YouTube videos at the time, like specifically Chris Titus Tech, where he like goes into um, like he's a big advocate for using the base distros versus all of like these offshoots. And it's like Mint is based off Ubuntu, and Ubuntu is based off Debian. So why wouldn't I just use the source and go with Debian? And yes, I know there's LMDE, but the main Linux Mint and the one I had installed was based off Ubuntu. Also, if you're going to use Ubuntu, I don't really get it because it's like, what's the point of Linux then? Because then it's just owned by like Canonical, which is like some massive company. And I feel like Linux, you know, you want to get a community-based distro. You know, that's part of the fun. Open source, not big companies. But besides that... Um, I ended up going with Debian, Debian stable. I wanted something that I could kind of poke around with a little bit more, but I also, at the time, now I kind of am more interested in bleeding edge stuff. Um, I wanted something super stable. So Debian was a great candidate, ended up going with that. Initially, I, f I followed like some Learn Linux TV tutorial on the installation. It was pretty straightforward and I decided to go with Plasma. I think it was Plasma 5 at the time. And um, so after my four-ish or so months with Mint, I stepped into Debian. Um, I got Plasma all set up. And I mean, I've, I've heard lots of different experiences with Plasma. Some people think it's, it's great. Some people think it's buggy and don't use it. For me, it was the latter. It's kind of buggy. I don't know. I feel like Plasma, there's so much going on. I was overwhelmed with options. There were, I was experiencing bugs. So... I nuked the system to install a different desktop environment. And yes, I know I could have just installed a different desktop environment alongside KDE, but I didn't really have much set up on there and I didn't want to have I didn't want to like prune the system of all the KDE stuff. So I installed GNOME. And GNOME I kind of fell in love with because I wouldn't say like I'm a Mac guy, right? I grew up on Windows, but I always had like a MacBook too, just for like other stuff and for school and I really like Mac's like clean interface and like this sounds kind of restrictive and weird but like the lack of options it's just like peaceful that like I know that I have a lot of stuff that I don't need to be tinkering with but yeah GNOME is just like it's smooth I like it so I've I fell in love with GNOME and um had that on Debian that was working out great um and yeah, I basically like it was smooth sailing, had Debian with GNOME, still didn't quite scratch that itch of screwing around with stuff other than like the install was a little bit more complicated because it's not, I think Debian, um, Mint was like a Calamari's install, which is just like next, 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 next. Debian's a little more advanced, they have their own thing, but other than the installation, like I was sitting pretty, right? I didn't have much more to tinker with. So... I was watching a lot of YouTubers at the time 
um, learning more and more. Like big shout out to the Linux Cast, Matt Matt from the Linux Cast mainly, um, DistroTube, Mental Outlaw, and Chris Titus Tech. I was watching all their stuff and then got this really um, big interest in going deeper, and I wanted to get a window manager because I was like, I, I'm a, I'm done with these like bloated desktop environments like GNOME and KDE. Like I'm gonna move to like a minimal window manager. So I decided to install i3, which is a tiling window manager. And um, I was also on, I'm on Xorg, I'm not on Wayland. So that's why I went with i3 instead of Sway. But I ended up installing i3 alongside my gnome desktop environment so i could bounce back if it if i didn't like it but i spent i spent like days possibly weeks just like making my i3 config perfect and tinkering it to exactly how i wanted and um i became like a ninja with my keyboard it was great <laughs> like i barely have to touch my mouse i would just like i use the vim motion keys for moving windows around and everything i felt like a hacker it was awesome and um, I was really all in on window managers. So I, I got my config perfect. I used i3 blocks for my bar. Yes, I know poly bar is cooler, but I used i3 blocks at the time. I had my gaps set up so like it would auto size the gaps. And I, it's kind of a waste of screen real estate, but it looks sick, you have to admit. I had my border highlighting set up. I had rounded corners. I had um a comp I had the Pycom compositor for like transparency on my terminal windows. Like I was ricing my distro, right? And I had nitrogen for the wallpaper thing, all my keybind set up. But one of the main issues that like I just could not fix and it was really driving me crazy was um screen tearing. Like it was just like I could deal with it. But it's just one of those things that like when you see it, it, it just it just always made me super mad. And it was just something that I, I, I couldn't deal with. I tried going into the I have a GTX 1080, so I have a NVIDIA card. I tried going into I don't I don't remember what the setting is, but you can open the NVIDIA control panel and turn on like full rendering, like full frames or something. I don't I don't remember what the setting is, but it's supposed to fix screen tearing. Um I felt like maybe that did a little bit, but it didn't do much. And then I got a um, a different monitor configuration. So now I have two 144 hertz monitors and then a 60 hertz monitor in portrait mode. And then they're all like different resolutions too, like two or two K, one's 1080p. And that like made the screen tearing way worse. So yeah, that was pretty annoying, but I was really liking the window manager life. And then after about, I don't know, that would have been another couple of months, four-ish or five, something like that. Um, I was going to be moving for the summer for an internship as a network engineer. And I was going to have a secondary setup because I was going to be living away from home um, during the weekdays, and I'd be back at my primary setup on weekends. So I wanted to take the opportunity to set up another Linux system, to screw around with that. So at the time, I was big into the Linux cast, and Matt successfully convinced me to try OpenSUSE Tumbleweed. And um, this is different for me because, you know, RPMs instead of DEBs. And um, so I decided to give it a shot. I wanted to do a minimal install, though. I was not going to install a desktop environment alongside, like, the main installation. So I installed um, a minimal server installation and had to... I mean, this was really painful. I had to reinstall a lot and totally, like, nuke and pave, restart... And because um, there's there's so many like dependencies and like common packages that everything relies on that you don't think about and like learning how to like install like Xorg and like your um, display manager and stuff like that. Like if you want to go with SDDM, if you want to go with um, 
light dm or gdm or ly or lee i don't know how you say it but um yeah so there, there's so many things you don't think of that goes into it but i had time i had some free time at the time and i was like i was really enjoying learning all of it like i wasn't making that much progress it took me forever but it was fun and eventually i got that set up went with light dm as a um display manager am i am I might be saying that it might not be Display Manager, but it's like the login greeter. I know it's named something stupid that doesn't make sense, but it's it's your thing that manages your login and you pick your window manager desktop environment from there. But I went with LightDM for that. Um, for the window manager, I went with OpenBox because I wanted to try a floating window manager. Um, I actually ended up configuring like a bunch of like window resizing key bindings. So it kind of became a tiling window manager just because, I don't know, it just made sense with my workflow. I wasn't going to drag a window around with my mouse, right? Because I'm not a pleb anymore. <laughs> and um, so, yeah, I got that set up with OpenBox. I used Tint2 for the panel. I used Rofi instead of D menu this time. Um, and I really got into theming. So I was doing, um, uh, am I saying this right? Cat Pachin. Yeah, Cat Pachin theming. It's like cat and cappuccino, but it's it's a really cool color scheme. I'll, I'll throw a picture up here so you can see what I'm talking about. But I had that thing riced out with um, all the Cat Pachin theming. And um, yeah, that went pretty good. Um, my only dislikes with OpenSUSE was, um, well, Tumbleweed specifically, I wasn't using Leap. Um, this is, and this was also my first rolling release. So that was kind of scary for me. I was under the impression that like I'd update and everything would bork all the time. Um, but it was stable to my surprise. Um, so I liked it. I also really liked, um, the OpenSUSE's implementation of BetterFS is the file system opposed to ext4 is just set up perfectly and implemented snapshots and everything from the beginning. Um, if something broke, I probably wouldn't know how to use it to revert to the snapshot, but it was there, and that was what's important. So um, my main dislikes of OpenSUSE was Zipper. Um, Zipper kind of sucks compared to apt. Um, I don't know. It's slow. Um, package availability. Well, for system package, I mean, I always had Flatpak to rely on. But if I want, I don't know. I, I always prefer to install system packages. I don't know why I'm like that. But honestly, Flatpaks, I mean, Flatpaks, you're kind of, to my understanding, you're reusing some of the same dependencies. So it's less space efficient. But at the same time, since it's all like containerized, it 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 ca it would cause less problems because everything you need is in the package itself opposed to reaching out and pulling all these other system packages so i don't know i always try to install system packages zipper there isn't an insane amount of system packages available so i would have to use the open build service which to my understanding is like a community based um repo where people like add their own system packages it's kind of like the COPR in Fedora or the AUR in Arch. For my understanding, I could be completely wrong, but that's kind of what it is. But those packages, since they're like community maintained, are, weren't always updated. So that was kind of weird. And then you have to add a bunch of different repositories. So package packages kind of sucked. Um, a lot of people praise Yast. Um, if you don't know, Yast is like OpenSUSE's like universal settings manager. Like you can do everything in it. I think you can even like, I think you can like run VMs in it and stuff too. Like, but for me, it was like too much stuff in one place. Didn't really care for it. A lot of like the, like the normal like config files that like. Generally, I know I can I can like look up tutorials and a config file for Debian will be in like etc slash da 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 and like especially like when setting up things like your display greeter and stuff like that. It's like Yast. I feel like it's because of Yast. Like it tries to implement it into settings instead of having these config files dotted around, and it makes things kind of more confusing, especially when you're a noob like me who's trying to like set up something for the first time and like 
you're on a weird distro that has stuff in weird places but like that would that would get better the more i used it so that that's more of a skill issue i would say and um overall i I would use OpenSUSE again i just don't like that it's a um a corporate distro like it's owned by a corporation i prefer a community-based distro but i mean i would say it's probably better than fedora then because i don't know what companies were SUSE or ibm red hat you know i'd probably pick SUSE just because they're smaller ibm's like a tech giant and red hat like their whole thing that they did with centos is pretty bad so um yeah open SUSE wasn't too bad but when i ended up moving back home i wiped that system to use as a server since it was my secondary and I don't really think I'm going to be moving back to OpenSUSE anytime soon, but it wasn't a bad experience. Also, I kind of just learned that OpenBox wasn't my thing. I don't know. Wasn't crazy about it. It wasn't bad, but yeah. Plus, it's I don't think it's going to get touched in forever. It's kind of a dead project. And um, yeah, so I got back home and decided to go back to my primary Debian install. Like, I love Debian. I was at home. And when I got back, I just kept getting more and more frustrated with the stupid screen tearing crap. And um, there was also, when I swapped all my monitors out, it was the screen tearing and then like a lot of my, this is, this is basic and it probably would have took me less than an hour to fix my like um, X Randar or A Randar stuff. Like my screens were screwed up because of this new portrait mode monitor like it did not want to have the three monitors and it then it made all my borders weird because the resolutions were different and i don't know i was like do i want to spend all this time fixing this or i kind of just want to go back to gnome because it was simple and i kind of miss that clean feeling and i just like to switch things up once in a while so i just went back to gnome but it was just installed alongside it so i can still bounce back to i3 but i've been using gnome for like two months now ever since i moved back home and i mean i honestly really like it um part of me kind of hates that i like gnome so much because it's like kind of like i don't know i feel like a normie or something and like all the all the gnome packages like all the gnome um programs like nautilus for the file manager and everything it's like it's basic but it just kind of works for me you know and um i use some tweaks i'm not a bunch of tweaks but a a couple here and there and i'm liking it sorry if that cut was extremely noticeable i'm actually using my phone as a webcam here and it died so here we are again but as i was saying um as i'm getting to my one year here well it's been one year i'm on debian with um gnome installed and i'm liking gnome i'm comfortable um, I'm getting that itch again. So, I mean, am I thinking Arch and Hyperland, or is that too much screwing around? Maybe I want to give Fedora a shot. Um, Cosmic DE looks pretty sick, so I, I could go in any direction, but I'm definitely getting that itch again. And, yeah, I mean, for my one-year experience with Linux, it was great. It is honestly, like, this sounds stupid, but it's changed me as a person, like, that I'm so much more confident with figuring stuff out now when it comes to tech. I mean, I've always been a techie, like, but I've always been more on the hardware side of things. Like, my confidence on the software side of things, like, is insane now. Like, the amount I've learned in the past year would have been, like, unfathomable to me if you would have told me, like, two years ago that now, like, Linux is, like, over like almost overtaken my pc hardware hobby like it's crazy but um it's been an amazing experience i foresee myself using linux forever unless like i don't know if bsd or something gets really good but it's it's way better in windows i love it it's like my favorite hobby now and i would recommend it to anyone honestly well if if you want to screw around with stuff that is if you just want something that's plug and play huh maybe but yeah um please be nice to me in the comments down below you can tell i I don't know how to talk on camera i'm this was probably very painful to watch as it was to record 
And also, I'd really appreciate it if you would like the video. And please, just please comment below if you have any Linux experiences you want to share. If you have any tips for me. Or if you have any recommendations on where I should like distro hop to next or anything to try. But yeah, I really appreciate you guys checking out this video. And I wish you guys the best of luck with your Linux experiences. And just like stay hungry, keep learning. And yeah.